Hi again. Glad you've joined me for this edition of Disaster Hack. Today I'm going to talk about mitigation measures to reduce disasters and their impacts. Once you've assessed your risks and created a hazard mitigation action plan, you are now in a position to mitigate disasters. So today our goals are threefold. Define mitigation. Understand two types of mitigation, structural and non-structural mitigation, and explain why mitigation is increasingly important and urgent in emergency management. So to start off, what is mitigation? This is an important question because it's not always understood as much as other phases such as preparedness or response, or perhaps even recovery, although this latter phase could be debated. But mitigation is often referred to as one of the phases of emergency management in which efforts are made to reduce risks and losses and or alleviate potential impacts of disasters. In other words, mitigation attempts to prevent disasters if we can, reduce impacts for those we cannot prevent, and share losses, for example, through insurance claims. There are generally two types of mitigation strategies, structural mitigation, and non-structural mitigation. Let's explore each one in further detail. Structural mitigation often relates to engineering and something you could physically touch. A good example of structural mitigation is a dam or a levee. However, let's keep in mind that these may also augment risk in unique ways, and so we need to approach them with caution. Structural mitigation could also include building roads and bridges to withstand flooding or seismic activity. It may include buildings that need additional redundancy and support columns or a seismic damper in the case of earthquakes. In other cases, homes in Florida need tie-downs to keep the roof on the walls when hurricanes occur, and others in the Midwest may need safe rooms for tornadoes. Other buildings need equipment to detect fires or smoke and extinguish fires quickly. Another good example is glass that's more resistant to things like bombings. These are all aspects of structural mitigation. Non-structural mitigation refers to other actions that can be taken to prevent disasters, reduce impacts, or distribute losses. Let me share a few examples. Land use is a very important one. This includes keeping schools away from industrial areas, removing homes from low-lying areas that flood, Setting buildings back away from roads and railroads, these are often based on laws, regulations, and ordinances. Another example is insurance. In this case, you're encouraging safer behavior based on the costs of policies and or you are distributing losses among all of those who purchase insurance and experience a disaster. Mitigation is extremely important and we need to be far more proactive in emergency management than we have been in the past. Disasters and their impacts are in many ways more and worse now, as E.L. Quarantelli, the famous disaster sociologist, noted many years ago. We need to do more to prevent them, reduce their probability, minimize their consequences to save lives, property, and the environment. Let me share a few quotes that illustrate this. Eric Tolbert said, in our lifetime, Probably within the next two decades, Americans will see one or two catastrophic events that will be almost beyond comprehension. This quote was shared in 1999, prior to 9-11, the Indian Ocean tsunami, Hurricane Katrina, the Haiti earthquake, and the Japan earthquake tsunami and nuclear crisis. One last quote by John Slater from Australia. He says, We cannot meet today's challenges with yesterday's methods and be in business tomorrow. That is sage advice. In conclusion, let me reiterate a few central principles. Mitigation includes proactive measures to prevent disasters or reduce their impacts. Mitigation may be structural or non-structural in nature, and mitigation must be a bigger priority among those working in emergency management. If you're seeking further information about mitigation, I would encourage you to read the books by Islam and Ryan or Dennis Maletti. There's also some great books by David Godschalks, Alexander Jerolaman, John Kiefer, Michiko Banba, and Rashid Shah. 
Well, best wishes and have a great day.